This video considers the final two steps in the five-step approach to accounting for revenue as determined by IFRS 15. Up to this point, you would have considered whether there is a contract with a customer. You would have analyzed that contract to determine the performance obligations, and then you would have calculated the transaction price for those for the contract. Now you need to allocate that transaction price to the various performance obligations identified in step two. The transaction price is then allocated to these various performance obligations based on the relative standalone selling prices of each of those obligations as they would usually be sold in individual transactions all on their own. The calculation of the apportionment is done at the inception of your lease contract. Let's consider the following example to illustrate this step. C Limited entered into a contract with B Limited. In terms of this contract, C Limited will supply equipment to B Limited at a transaction price of 1 million Rand payable upon delivery and installation. At this point, it appears as if there is a contract with a customer and that the performance obligation is the supplying of this equipment. The million rand price is inclusive of installation and training. C Limited charges the same price regardless of whether installation and training is performed or not. That gives you an idea that this million rand is the standalone selling price for the equipment. Other companies can perform the installation and or training. The estimated fair value of the installation services is 10,000 Rand. The estimated fair value of the training is 25,000 Rand. Returning to step 2 in the process, it appears that the installation and training are separate performance obligations and we've now been given the relative selling prices for these specific obligations. The costs incurred by SEMA Limited to manufacture the equipment amounts to 750000 and they make use of the perpetual inventory system. Let's consider the journal entries. On 1 September, you'll see an amount of revenue recognized now at 966. This isn't the million rand. You'll also see revenue recognized on 1 November of 9,000. Again, this isn't the 10,000 Rand. And then there's some unearned income. This must be on the training that's delivered over time, but again, not at the standalone selling price. So to calculate these amounts, you'll need to look at the following. You have been given the relative fair values or the standalone selling prices for each of these components. The equipment, regardless of installation and training, is usually sold for the million rand. The installation is usually provided at 10,000 rand, the training at 25,000 rand. So the total relative st of standalone selling prices is 1,035,000. Our transaction price for this specific transaction, though, is 1 million rand. That is the amount entered into in terms of the contract and will cover these three separate performance obligations. You then need to take that transaction price and allocate it to each of the performance obligations on the relative selling price. So for example, the training is 25,000 relative selling price, but you need to then go and allocate the transaction price to this component. Having seen that allocation of the transaction price done now, you will now start recognizing the amounts in these journal entries that are recognized as revenue for the sale of equipment on 1 September, for in 1 November the installation costs, and then the training Please note, it's done over a period of time, so it's a series of goods and services. It may happen that your transaction price includes a discount amount. A discount amount is allocated to the various components proportionally 
unless you can show that that discount is particular to one of the components. And to be able to meet that, you need three tests that you have to pass. The entity will regularly need to sell each of those components at a standalone basis, that it sells them at a discount, and that the discount on the transaction price is close to or approximates the discount that would normally be granted on the component that you are targeting the discount towards. As an example of this, consider the following. The transaction price is given to you at 2,000 Rand. This is for an item A and a service A. The relative standalone selling prices is 1,200 Rand and 1,000 Rand. So your total relative standalone selling price is 2,200 Rand. There is discount specific to item A of 50 Rand, assuming those criteria are met. Your first port of call is to allocate that transaction price of 2,000 Rand based on the relative standalone selling prices to each of the performance obligations. Once you have done that, you now know the amount that's allocated and you go and say, right, the discount is attributable only to item A and deduct that discount just from item A. If that had not been the case, it would have been um, allocated proportionally to item A and service A. The final step in this five-step process is now to recognize your revenue when the performance obligation is satisfied. Your performance obligation is satisfied when there is a transfer of control from the seller to the buyer. The standard offers very in various indicators of when control can pass that you can consider. It might be sufficient to meet one of these indicators, maybe several of these indicators. That will be requiring some professional judgment on your part. In general, a person needs to consider whether the performance obligation is satisfied over time. If you cannot satisfy it over time and you do not meet those indicators and requirements, then the performance obligation is defaulted back to being satisfied at a specific point in time.